Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Thursday the 14th of August 2014 and uh, today we're looking at this uh, giant object in the Stereo A HI2 uh, camera and uh, this is a video by BP Earthwatch. BP Earthwatch and uh, Thor News have uh, done a couple of videos on this object in recent times. Uh, Thor News uh, originally reported that he thought maybe it was a neutron star and uh, BP Earthwatch, uh, although in this video he says for a while he thought it was a lens flare, he's now thinking that it's a solid object. Uh, so we're going to take a look at this and see if we can uh, figure out what it is and confirm what's going on here. So first of all, let's have a listen to a uh, part of BP Earthwatch's video. Last month we were watching Comet Jacques come very close to Venus and the tail looked like it went right across it. Remember that? And everyone kept asking me in that first blue air, that semicircle, what that was. And because it never moved, and the object that was behind it never moved, that was showing the most density, it looked like a corrupt uh, lens or a scratch on the lens or a lens flare, but it stayed there. But now it's moving, and the object that was behind it is moving, and it appears to be stronger. This curve or shield or whatever you want to call it I don't know I've never seen anything like it and I had written it off to be honest with you as some type of lens defect as I imagine a lot of you guys that watch this had too because it never moved but now it's moving check this out it's moving down into the left and the object is moving that is very close to it notice also in this image that there's two lines that are connecting now this shield as it moves or whatever it is again I'm calling it a shield and I'm calling it a giant object I don't know what it is but the shield is responding to the movement of that now looking at okay so I'll stop it there so um, obviously BP Earthwatch uh, seems a little bit confused as to what this object is he's now calling it a shield he's calling it a sol solid object even though we can see the background stars uh, moving uh, behind it um, but let's see if we can work out what's going on. So um, first of all I'm going to go into uh, Starry Night and we're going to have a look at the um, current situation of uh, where Stereo A, Stereo B, the Earth and Venus are in relation to each other. So this is as of today's date, 14th of August 2014 UTC. We can see that we've got the Earth over here, we've got Venus here, and we've got Stereo A and Stereo B. Now Stereo um, A, the HI2 camera, is, is looking in this uh, direction here. So we've got Venus in the uh, field of view. If I open it up in, in this view here, uh, you can see the approximate field of view of the Stereo A HI2 camera uh, with Venus, <coughs> excuse me, with Venus um, pretty much in the center there. Now we can see that the orbit of Venus as it comes around the Sun and if I step the the days forward you'll notice how the the planets and also Stereo A and Stereo B are moving around the Sun in an anti-clockwise direction. Okay, So if I bring that back to where we are now if we take a line from Stereo A towards Venus, we can see that, that that line, if we extend it out, is pretty much at a tangent to the orbit of, uh, of Venus. In other words, it runs along the edge of this orbit here. This is called greatest elongation. Okay, So we've got greatest elongation there. If Venus was on this side, then greatest elongation would be down here. So at the moment we've got Venus right there and as it comes around in its orbit and Stereo A is basically a head but following, if you like, uh, if you know what I mean, it's a head but it's looking back. So Venus is, is, is following the Stereo A uh, camera. So Venus is actually approaching the Stereo A from its Stereo A's perspective. Okay, It's basically coming almost straight towards it as it comes around in its orbit. Um, now if we look at the um, the other view, um, this is this is the point of view from Stereo A, so we're, 
we're actually looking from the stereo A camera here looking towards Venus. Now if I turn on the uh, the orbit here you see um, we can see how, how um, Venus has, has come around the back of the Sun from down the bottom here and it's actually come around and it's it's coming towards the the camera as it heads around in front of the Sun. Now this explains why Venus appears to have sort of stalled. Normally we see the planets crossing the field of view in the uh, stereo A or stereo B views. But because it's actually come around from behind the Sun and it's come out to its greatest elongation and then it's sort of coming towards the stereo A camera, it seems to have stalled as it's coming towards us. But over the next few days and, and weeks it's actually going to be heading back this way. So let's um, go to the, the images from uh, Stereo A, HI2. Um, now these are the recent ones from, uh, this is 9th of August, so I've got, the, got 315 images loaded up here. So let's play that and uh, we can see this shield as BP Earthwatch calls it, right here. This is Venus and notice that as it flicks over to the the last image we'll see this jump um, as we go from from the the starting date to the the end date and looping around for the dates that I've set the range there we go you see the jump there so this object that this shield is actually moving downwards and around as Venus is actually heading upwards now let's see if I can speed that up any so it's more apparent so we can clearly see, if I position my cursor there and just leave it stationary, we can see that um, Venus appears to be moving upward, and as Venus moves upward, then the, uh, the shield uh, moves downward and around. So what is this shield? Uh, you know, what are we seeing here? Well, uh, let me just stop that. I can actually simulate this uh, also in Starry Night by turning on the lens flare effect. Okay, so now you can see that we've got this shield thing here. Now this one is created from the uh, glare off the sun. In Starry Night I can't produce one off Venus, uh, it's not part of the software, but um, this is a simulated lens flare from uh, the, the sun and uh, it will show us the same thing. So as I move this around you can see how that lens flare follows the sun. It's always pointing towards the sun like that, it's always pointing towards the sun and you know it gets brighter or, or dimmer depending on, on the position. Now this is actually what's happened um, with uh, Venus as it's come into the field of view of the Stereo A HI2 camera. It's giving, remember that Venus is a very bright uh, star-like object, it's the brightest planet in our sky, the next brightest is Jupiter. So as Venus has moved into the field of view of the Stereo A camera, it is giving off this lens flare effect, and that is what we're seeing in these images. Now you might say to me, well, that's just BS, because why haven't we seen it before? Well, that's what some people have said. In fact, we have seen it before, so let's take a look. This is from August 2014. Um, the previous time that uh, Venus was at greatest elongation like this, was on around about the 18th of October 2012 and what do we see? We see the shield again. Uh, the next one before that was, uh, what have we got, 11th of January 2011 and again we see the shield and before that we've got 7th of April uh, 2009 and again we've got the shield and before that uh, was around about 30th of June, early July 2007 and again we've got the shield. Let's just um, start that. You can see some of those images, I'll just speed it up for you. So um, yep, there is the shield, there is Venus and uh, you know again I can check any of these dates in Starry Night and confirm for example, let's check that last one. So early July uh, 2007, so I'm going to bring this back to July and 2007 and my field of view has moved because that has to be set up specifically for each view 
um, but you can see that Venus is at its greatest elongation in its orbit as it comes around and uh, this is when it creates this um, the shield effect one of the reasons being was if I zoom right into it you'll see the illumination of uh, Venus this is like a um, a, a last quarter uh, view of the of the moon if we were seeing it in our sky first quarter or last quarter it looks like a, a half a moon and uh, so it is giving off that glare which is creating that um, that lens flare and that shield effect that we see just like um, just like in the simulation from the, the Sun this one here so that's all it is it's a lens flare and that accounts for why it is transparent in the um, in the images let's go back to the first one and play it um, obviously we can see the background stars uh, through it so it's clearly not a solid object and the reason why it's moving down is because Venus is moving up in the field of view. Now Astronomy Live has uh, done a number of videos on his on his channel and uh, I recommend that you go to his channel Astronomy Live and uh, check out these three videos uh, Venusian lens flare masquerading as neutron star this was the video that he produced in response to Thor News Venus lens flare part 2 Venus lens flare part 3 and uh, I, I'm aware that Astronomy Live is currently working on a fourth video uh, where he's going to tie this all together so I recommend that you go to his channel subscribe and uh, watch out for his latest video as always do check out my Facebook discussion page Voices of Reason to Explain X Vortex you'll find a link in the description area Thank you for watching.